life. Look at Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Man, I meet a lot of Christian young people. They act like they're scared to death. Psalm 118. Psalm 118 and verse 6. Psalm 118 and verse 6. Let's read this verse together out loud. Ready? The Lord is on my side. Now stop right there and think about it. Man, that's a great thought. Ready? Keep going. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? I got to love that statement. Right. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Why? How? What was going on in his head and heart? He stands there. He looks at the giant. And you know what he's thinking? I will not fear. What can man do unto me? He wasn't even afraid a little bit. Where are the Christian guys and girls in this room that aren't afraid, that aren't afraid to live big God Christianity? Right. I'm telling you right now, there's probably somebody in this room and you're scared tonight to surrender all. Yeah. Well, what might God require of me? Well, what might God ask of me? But what if I don't like what God has planned? Think about how crazy that thought is. Right. I mean, here it is, you have the creator of the universe, the one who brought you into this world, and you're going to question whether or not doing His will will make you happy? Right. Oh, let me tell you something. You need to junk your fears, and you need to be like David. He had big courage that came from God. God spare us from scaredy cat Christians. God keep us from spiritual whips. Where are the spiritually courageous teenagers in this room tonight? Stop being afraid. Hey, young man, stop being afraid of serving God and living big God in Christianity. David said in verse 6 here, the Lord is on my side. David was trusting in God. Hey, let me say this. The Lord is on my side. I'm talking about me. He's speaking for me. The Lord is on my side. I hope He's on your side. If you're saved, He is. That means God's with you. What can man do on me? Nothing that God doesn't allow. But you know, I live for God. What if, you know, what if I don't have any in my knee? God will take care of you. God will meet your needs. Don't be afraid. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 1, the righteous are bold as a lion. Have you ever seen a scared lion? No. No. The lion, we call him the what? The king of the jungle. He's not scared of anything. He's not scared of anything. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Hey, young man, take heart. Take courage. Well, child, I don't have a strong Christian home like some of my friends. You can still be a courageous young man. Right. Well, you know, I don't know because I go to the public school whether or not I can really make my life count for God. You can have courage from God. You don't need to be afraid of going to the public school. You don't need to be afraid of the fact that your family's not all that you wish it was. You can still live for God, have big courage from God. I'm saying this, hey, don't be afraid to give out the gospel as a soul winner. Amen. By the way, young man, if God calls you to preach the gospel, don't you be afraid. Amen. Don't you be afraid. Well, you know, I don't know if my family's going to be happy with it. Look, I'm not putting down your family, but I'm saying this, if God's called you, you need to go ahead and preach the word of God. Right. Well, you say, brother Tom, man, doesn't that scare you? Man, when I was 14, I went to an altar and I said, Lord, whatever you want. I didn't know all what he would ask. But at 14, I said, Lord, full surrender, whatever you want. Right. I was 15 years old, and God knocked on the door of my heart. I know that he did. And God pressed on my heart that he wanted me to be a preacher. Fellas, you hear me up here today, you see me running my jaws and think, I bet he always did that. Absolutely not. Right. Man, I was not the guy that wanted to get up and do all this kind of stuff. My mom used to run the school play. I wanted one job, the average. Right. I could read it, be real still, and wear a suit. I just, da 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 I didn't like the idea of getting up in front of a crowd of people. But God knocked on my heart. God said, I want you to preach. Yeah. Let me tell you right now, if God wants you to be a preacher, I'm talking maybe the quietest guy on this side. Mm -hmm. Hear me now, fellas. You might be the quietest guy here, but if God wants you to be a preacher, if you tell him yes, he'll give you the courage to do it. You need to have courage to preach the word of God. It's big time important. Have courage of God. Hey, don't be afraid to take your stand. I'm talking about taking your stand for what we believe as Christians. Man, the world speaks up about what they think. I saw something tonight on the news when I was, uh, I was looking at a Fox News thing, a Drudge Reporter, one of these things, and it's Brad Pitt saying that he doesn't really believe there's a God. Now, you know what? I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry for Brad's sake, and hopefully he'll get saved. But basically, he's just saying, no, I don't really know that there's a God. I'm about 20% atheist and maybe about 80% agnostic. Whether he believes a God or not doesn't change the fact that there is a God. That's right. Okay? So we have a bunch of people today in the world, they're not afraid to say, I don't really believe in God. Watch me now. They're not afraid to flaunt their sin. Right. So where are the guys here? Where are the girls here that are taking a stand for God, doing it courageously, not be ashamed, not be afraid? That's what we need. You need to let it be known you're a Christian and that you're not ashamed. So don't be afraid to stand. Here's why. Don't be afraid to suffer. Don't be afraid to suffer. Uh, you know, there was a day when young people your age went through some suffering, went through some trials, right. went through some trouble. If you happen to be called by God to go through a tough time, God will get you through the tough time. 
Here's one, don't be afraid to live. Don't be afraid to live. What do you mean by that? Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Some young people hold back from selling out. Here's what I mean. You'll come and you'll watch me, and I'm no great Christian, but you'll come and you'll watch me and you'll hear me talk about living for God and you'll see my family and you'll listen to me preach these sermons and you'll think, well, that's nice for him, that's good for him. You know, I kind of admire that kind of respect. And when are you going to move it from it's for me to it's for you? Right. Huh? I mean, when are you, when are you going to stop being afraid to really live the Christian life? I mean, just get excited about it and let it be known, hey, I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ. I love the Lord. I'm excited. When I come to church, I'm not going to act like, you church time. No, 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 no. You're the guy that's going to help lead this youth department to let it be known that you're a group of teenagers excited about the Lord. Big courage from God. Number four, and we're moving. Big confidence in God. David had big confidence in God. I'm talking about big God Christianity. Big confidence in God. David looked at Goliath, a giant, and said, you're going to die. That's pretty confident. I mean, that's a big time confidence. Look at Psalm 18. Psalm 18. David had this incredible confidence in his God. Psalm 18 and verse 28. Psalm 18 and verse 28. Here's what the Bible says. For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will light my darkness. Then notice verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. By my God I have leaped over a wall. You know what David believed? David believed that God could help him to do whatever it is that God wanted him to do. David had great confidence in God. Let me ask you a question. Do you have great confidence in your God? You can. You should. You should be confident in Him. Say, what do you mean? You've got giants in your life. Listen. You've got giants in your life. Mm -hmm. Hey, girl. You've got giants in your life. Sometimes it's a giant of sin. Sometimes it's a giant of family. Sometimes it's a giant of school. Sometimes it's the giant of friends. Sometimes there's something in your life that's keeping you back from serving the Lord. And you can overcome the giants in your life. You can leap over whatever those walls are that are keeping you from being spiritually successful. With God's strength, with having confidence in Him, God can get you over your obstacles. Hey, sister, listen to me. You don't have to let whatever obstacle it is that's in your life keep you from serving the Lord. Gentlemen, you don't need to let obstacles stop you. You can go on for God. Say it with me. I can do all things. Talk to me. I can do all things. By myself? No. I can do all things. Talk to me. Through Christ. Which strengthens me. You have that type of confidence in God? You should. Here's one. David had big commitment towards God. David had big commitment towards God. What do you mean, Brother Charlie? David wasn't casual about God. He was committed towards God. When David picked up the rock, statement, he was committing himself. Big time. When he picked up the rock, he was committing himself. Hey, when David ran towards Goliath, he was committing himself. Statement, question. Are you casual or are you committed? Are you casual or are you committed? Look at me. Guys, gentlemen, stand up. Everybody stand up. Spin around three times. Stand up. And David stepped out there, and the giant started talking all this mess. 
And I'm telling you right now, even as I'm preaching the Word of God and you're thinking about stepping away from the crowd, the devil, that giant, the devil, he's already starting to tell you, man, if I commit it like the way he's talking about, I'd be away from my friends. I, I may get laughed at. I may get mocked. My parents may not be real excited about it. That might mean I have to go to Bible college or something radical like that, like the preacher talks about. Hey, even right now, that giant is starting to talk this mess right. in your heart. Right. You know what? Maybe they'll let it stop. That's right. David went over. He grabbed his weapon. Are you with me? Hey, you need to grab your weapon. Okay? Mm -hmm. David grabbed this. And David didn't run away from the giant. The Bible says David ran towards the giant. Hey, watch me now. He invaded the giant's turf. Right. Give me some young men. Give me some young ladies that are tired of hanging back in the corner with all the other Christian whips. Hello, Christian wimpy teenagers that won't charge the giant, that won't charge the forces of hell, that won't go after the cause of Christ, that aren't serious about building the local church. Give me some young people that will break away from that mess and say, I'm committed. Yeah, that's right. yeah. But tell me, when there's commitment, there's risk involved. Absolutely. Jump up. Jump up. Does this look strong? What do you think? Does this look strong? Yeah, the oldest, you help me. You already helped me once later. Don't let it fall over. Ceiling fan. Stand up, Christian. <laughs> Where you at, Justin? Come here, Justin. That's good. Get in there. Get in there. All you boys jump in there. Right here. Get in this pot. Y'all ready? Jump in. Jump in. Jump in. Step on top. What? Step back a little bit. I'm better than that. <laughs> Sunday morning, Sunday night, midweek service. Yeah. 
Now, Dr. Lee Robinson used to say, free to thrive. You don't want to just survive as a Christian, you want to thrive as a Christian. Right. Commit to your service. Some of you, the other night, when we talked about live to give, live for others, said, you know, I need to be on a bus ride. Well, question, are you going to be on one Saturday? Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking a few weeks from now. No, man, I think right now, Saturday. Right. Well, you know, I, I've been away, and I need to, you know, clean my room. I need to iron my socks. Get off of that. <laughs> get out on the bus route. Get out on the bus route. Hey, get out on the bus route. Commit to your service. Whatever job it is that you have to do, commit to your service. Here's one, commit to your convictions. Commit, commit to your convictions. Man alive, we've got so many guys, they've got spines that are made of jello. They'll bow down to any little stupid idol the world sets up. Man, get your conviction, brother. This idea that, you know, we got to run around, we got to check your iPod. Let me see your iPod. Man, it ought to be able to be that the pastor can listen to your iPod. Right. Hello? Yeah. And, absolutely. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, come on right now. Again, some of you, we just hit a rock there. Let me say this. The Bible talks about psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Right. Now, I haven't plowed on it all week long. Some of you just went into shock when I just brought it up. You thought, man, I didn't think he was going to go there. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. Let me say this. You can't listen to bad music to be a good Christian. That's right. You know? just can't do it. You know how I am with rock music and rap music and country music and hip-hop and pop and all the rest of it? I'm bored with preaching about it. Right. I've got all this stuff in the Bible that talks about how awesome God is and how we can go on the offensive for the Lord. And we got to stop in the middle of preaching the Word of God and start talking about that music's bad for you. You know that. Right. Hello? You yeah. know that. Why? All it's doing, man, is trying to stir up your flesh to right. go and do a bunch of stuff that you're not allowed to do. Right. Who said I'm not allowed to? God said. God said it's good for man not to touch a woman. So then why do you listen to music six, eight hours a day that promotes you going and touch a woman? Right. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, absolutely. Come on. Well, that's just how I roll. Well, you need to stop rolling that way and get right with God. Yeah. Absolutely. Some of you girls, the best thing you can do. Right, some of you girls will smile once again. I don't mean some high preacher. Mm, no. I don't mean that. You know what would change some of your hearts? If you just went home and deleted your whole stinking iPod and started over. Right. Honestly. Honestly, just start over. With what? Psalms and spiritual songs. It's good. Spiritual music will make you live good. Right. And it'll make you feel good. Right. Some of you girls listen to depressing music. It's pitiful. I mean, really, it's the devil lying to you, and you're falling into it. Get some, listen now, get some commitment about your convictions. What are you going to look at? Hey, watch me now. Some of you, if you're not careful, you're going to go home, you're going to go online, you're going to start messing around with whoever on MySpace or Facebook, and you're going to just pull yourself down within 30 minutes after right. getting home. You're going to go check a bunch of messages, watch me now, and a few of them are going to be from two kids that didn't come to camp because they didn't want to. Right. And they're going to release the message, and they're going to mock the skits, and they're going to mock the games, they're going to mock, well, did you listen to the preaching? Did you get right with God? Some of them are going to mock, probably, it's already on your phone as a voicemail, or on your Facebook, or whatever else. Hey, you need to just say, I'm committed to Christ, I'm walking away from all that kind of stuff that's going to pull me down, and as for me and my friends, we will serve the Lord. Some group of guys over here has got to start leading more than what you've been doing. Right. I'm talking about within the church, within the youth department, within the school. Some of you boys say, hey, we're going to the next level. We're going to follow me as I follow Christ. Right. Your youth leaders will not mind a bit. <laughs> I'm not talking about going over top of the pastor and the other leaders and doing something you're not allowed to do. But I'm saying, hey, as a man of God is following God and preaching the word of God, there ought to be a whole group of guys that say, man, we're ready.